small modular reactors are going to be just as expensive or more expensive than large reactors right now, which are have a capital cost of about 15 times that of new wind or solar. So specifically, for example, let's first talk about large reactors. Uh, in Georgia, there are two reactors being built, the only two in the US. And they are between 17 to 18 years now between planning and operation. So they had, they started 17, 18 years ago, because there are two of them, they were being planned and it, they still are not available for use yet. So these are the small modular nuclear No, no these are large ones. So I'm first talking oh, okay. about the large ones, then I'll, then I'll yeah, go to the Yeah, yeah, sure, ones. sure. But I mean, so far they've laid a sidewalk from Miami to Seattle of concrete. So that the emissions of that have gone into the air and not a single kilowatt hour has been generated. And it's cost $34 billion for mm. 2.2 or three gigawatts. So that works out to over $15 a watt. And compared with new onshore wind or new utility solar is $1 a watt. The overall cost of energy is going to result in about seven to eight times that of wind or solar. So you're, and it takes for wind or solar to be put up, it takes one to three years. So we're talking about, you know, uh, seven, 15 to 17 years longer and, you know, seven to eight times the cost per unit energy to get the same power. And so if you plan a new large, and this is the same, there are plants in Europe, there's Flamenville, France, there's Hinkley in England, there's the Okuloto plant in Finland. There are several pl plants that are similar. They're all taking longer and costing huge amounts. And so it just makes no sense financially or wait, we need to solve 80% of the problem in eight years. And here we have nuclear reactors that take 17 to, well, really the average is 15 to 21 years between planning and operation. So they, they have no hope. These large reactors have absolutely no hope of helping with the climate problem. In fact, today there's less nuclear, nuclear production of electricity than in 2006. Just last Friday, another nuclear reactor in Belgium shut down permanently. And so there's less, just less and less. So nuclear is not helping to solve the problem. So what's this, so the nuclear industry realizes, well, people are finally realizing how useless this technology is for helping to solve the climate problem going forward. And so they shifted to talk about these small modular reactors. Well, the small modular reactors, before the large reactors, we were building small reactors. And the reason we switched to large reactors is due to economies of scale, because it's much cheaper to build large reactors than small reactors. But now they forgot about that. And now they're going back to the small reactors. But even the ones that are being built, they're already saying they're not going to be ready until 2030. And that's just a claim because the nuclear industry always claims they're going to be fast and cheap. But so that's just the start. And there's no guarantee it'll be 2030, it'll probably be 2035. And for all we know, and the cost will probably be three, four times higher for all we know. There's no evidence that there, it's going to be cheaper. In fact, it's, the evidence is it'll be more expensive because there are issues associated with small reactors that cause them to be more expensive because of the contamination of the actual equipment materials in the reactors themselves. But then on top of that, they don't get rid of the problems we have. In fact, some of them are worse. Nuclear weapons proliferation is the, one of the largest problems associated with, with uh, nuclear energy. Five countries of the world have secretly developed weapons under the guise of civilian nuclear energy programs. What are these small re reactors? Well, they can be shipped all over the world easily. And as a result, it's possible to, uh, for countries then to import uranium under the guise of civilian nuclear energy, just like Iran has done and centrifuge it and refine it to develop uh, weapons grade uranium or to harvest plutonium, which is even easier to produce weapons from. And so this is more of a problem. And what about meltdown risk? Well, there are so many different Models, models of these small modular reactors. We don't know what the meltdown risk is of each one. There's waste, you're still gonna have waste. And if you don't have waste, it's because they refine the uranium, uranium more, uh, re, so reprocess it for reprocessing for breeder reactors, but those are, have more weapons grade uranium. So that's a problem. You still need the uranium from underground mines, a lot of underground mines, and then you have uranium underground mining lung cancer risk from radon, which is associated with uranium mining. So you have all these peripheral problems, plus cost, plus delays. 
you know, it, why are these people talking about small modular reactors that may or may not be available in eight to 10 years? When we have today, we have wind, we have solar, we have batteries, we have uh, pumped hydro, we have uh, electric vehicles, we have heat pumps. We need to implement, deploy, deploy, deploy things as fast as possible. Not, we don't need miracle technologies. We need existing technologies that can be deployed as fast as possible.